When House of the Dragon concludes, there won't be any good excuse for showrunners Ryan Condal or Miguel Sapochnik to have not created a superior TV series to Game of Thrones, at least critically. Now this is not a hot take. By the end of this video, you should be well equipped to make the argument that House of the Dragon is inherently better than Game of Thrones. Now why should anyone even consider this premise, especially since we're only just now about to see House of the Dragon Season 1 premiere? In this video, we're going to discuss just two points that you can reflect upon as House of the Dragon rolls out. The last point offers such a dramatic difference from Game of Thrones that not having this available to them probably doomed D&D from the very start. Now real quick, if you enjoy this video or find it informative, please hit the like button. And if you're not already, make sure you're subscribed with the notification bell turned on so you can keep up with more House of the Dragon content moving forward. So let's get into this. First, let's look at an obvious point. This story is far more confined. The primary focus of this story is found within the title itself. Geographically, there's not going to be nearly as many storylines or events spread out. This is about the Targaryens and it will still be layered, but much more directly. When we think back to the best moments of Game of Thrones, seldom do we fondly recall the epic battle sequences of the later seasons more than the intimate conversations in seasons one through four. House of the Dragon will build intimacy and interfamily politicking, bringing to a slow progression of tensions that eventually boil over. The Battle of Blackwater took a full season of anticipation. The Wildland Invasion was built up from season one, and the battle didn't take place until the end of season four. You may not be super familiar with the source material, but to offer the slightest insight, the reasons the early season's conflicts had such satisfying climaxes was largely due in part to the buildup. As they say, it's been a long time coming. The Dance of the Dragons is only that. So many of the individual conflicts between the characters in House of the Dragon are tied to a great deal of history among the two. And it's much closer, it's more painful, it's betrayal by family. A conflict between two Targaryen characters will last years before the fighting finally starts, making it that much more satisfying when it does. Think of Daenerys vs Cersei. Of course there's conflict because Daenerys wants the throne for herself, but there's no personal conflict between the two until episode 4 of the final season, when Masande and Rhaegal are killed. Cersei is killed the next episode. They gave Daenerys season 7 to kind of develop a conflict for the throne, but the personal conflict with Cersei truly only lasted one episode, that of which never saw Daenerys and Cersei see each other face to face again. If there's one thing you know you won't see in House of the Dragon, it's a lack of personal vendetta that's been allowed to breathe and grow toward a true climax. Now let's move into what really separates this story from Game of Thrones when it comes to creating a faithful adaptation for a TV series. This story is complete, and we could drop the video right there and walk away. But to layer that point a bit, it becomes quite clear that D&D were in big trouble narratively after season 4. And this video isn't going to be about trashing Game of Thrones, but there's two things that happen. The showrunners were in a rush to the finish line, and George R. R. Martin wasn't keeping up. Even if Winds of Winter were published by, say, season 5, that would have been too late. D&D had a general idea of how certain characters would end, but they would never be able to offer the development required to earn those conclusions. Not when they want to finish in 8 seasons. Now all of this could have worked if when they started developing the TV series, they knew they wouldn't have the final two books to adapt. And who knows, they still may have dropped the ball because you could make the argument that they made a pretty faithful adaptation through season four, but there's a reason it took such a turn after that. A Feast for Crows and A Dance with Dragons alone should have taken them to season eight, if not further, before they had to create their own material. Why is it ending? Uh, I don't know, ask Dave and Dan when they come through. Um, we could have gone to 11, 12, 13 seasons, but uh, they... But there's enough to point to that suggests D&D believed they would have the conclusion of A Song of Ice and Fire when they started, and the first four seasons display that. So you have a show that quality-wise, narratively, is broken in two. There's a good half and a bad half. Go grab an apple. One side of it is perfect, crisp and sweet, but the other half is spoiled, mushy, and it tastes rotten. Even if the whole apple isn't rotten, but there's a single worm in it, are you eating that? Now let's grab a fresh apple. The bar is actually pretty low. It just can't be spoiled. Being better than Game of Thrones, unfortunately, is just not a very high bar right now. And for many of us, 
we have reasonably good expectations for House of the Dragon, knowing that the source material, while vague, as it is written as a historical documentation of the Targaryens, has a complete outline of the major events. There will never be a scene like Rhaegal being sniped out of the sky by Euron's fleet that magically were hidden because Daenerys is forgetful or something or whatever the explanation was that D&D provided us. They know exactly where they want the story to end. Unlike Game of Thrones, trying to make the ending align with the rest of the story, House of the Dragon showrunners are only filling in the gaps between the events to glue together the beginning and the middle to the predetermined end. This alone puts House of Dragon at such an advantage. It's really peculiar how little this is discussed. An adaptation of a book series, of which that series is incomplete by two books. There's not many examples of this happening. And this video isn't saying it can't work, but it objectively harmed the overall quality and narrative for Game of Thrones. Arguing that House of the Dragon will be better doesn't seem like a hot take because it's a completed story. Compared to an incomplete story, every book in the A Song of Ice and Fire series is a better read than Fire and Blood for sure. Please don't misunderstand. But which is better to adapt for TV if one is missing substantial source material, including the end? I think the answer to that question is pretty much common sense. Look, I made another video called Four Reasons Why It Will Be Better. If you like this video, I recommend you check that one out too. Until next time, thank you so much for watching.